being on the wrong side of history in terms of the oppression of women is being on the whole of history, all of recorded history. You're on the wrong side. If you are someone who genuinely believes that women don't deserve or aren't as much as men, you're like the plague. It's just pointless and deadly. Oh, what's that? You want to know what I think about Hillary Clinton winning the presidential election? I believe that it will cause some terrible misogynistic backlash, and I assume we'll look forward to eight years of jaw-droppingly sexist statements. Those are all quotes from Socrates himself. Now bend over and take off your pants or you'll never work in this town again. <laughs> Dude, Joss Whedon. Uh, look, this is not really a political thing despite the Hillary statement. Right, right. It was more just funny. Uh, Joss Whedon has gotten just lambasted with, uh, <laughs> with allegations lately. Now, look, are the allegations themselves funny? No. You know, like the, the, the stuff itself... No, but the absolute irony and hypocrisy of feminist warrior Joss Whedon being accused of all this stuff is honestly pure gold, and it's very funny because um, this guy has been very self-righteous about his work for years. I've never liked this man. I just never have. His bald head always came off. It just, you know, like there was something about him. It looked like an alien head. You can't trust it. Yeah, you can't. He reminded me of Roger from American Dad. And frankly, it was just off-putting. There was something about his vibe. Yeah, it's not good. It just told me, like, don't let women around this man. And, uh, you know, Hollywood did. And that's on them, quite frankly. Well, here's the thing with this. Like, jokes aside, um, we wanted to talk about this because it's just kind of sad. You know, like, and a lot of stuff has been coming out around Ray Fisher with, you know, Joss Whedon. And look... I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you want my full opinion on, you know, the Ray Fisher stuff, I've talked about it on Twitter a lot. I've talked about it in my uh, Snyder Cut review that probably came out by now. I'm not, like, a Hollywood expert here. I'm just a guy. But I've always said, I think Ray Fisher is right that Joss Whedon's a dick. You know, that's my opinion. Um, Is he racist? I don't know. Did the stuff that he do seem racist to me? Not really. Is everyone around him who just said, hey, look, this prolific filmmaker needs to be allowed to do his thing and we're not going to piss him off because we're in a weird spot racist no they just come off as unprofessional you know like a lot of stuff around this guy comes off unprofessional but when it comes to how he dealt with women and how he's been portrayed just in pretty much any account of his behavior it's not good no he comes off as someone who's very pretentious who thinks that he's a god almost and he's got that kind of complex whenever he's on set uh he's someone that just he, he seems to to leech onto the power and then just really not want to give anyone else kind of any input into what he's doing. And so it comes off as someone who uh, is impossible to work with, is a very difficult person, and like you said, just kind of a dick, like just in the way that he talks to people and the way that he thinks uh, that things should go. Yeah, I mean, uh, so just to run through some of the stuff that happened and we're going to kind of talk about each thing, the whole point of this is just to talk about, is anyone really surprised about Joss Whedon? You know, this kind of stuff has been happening in Hollywood forever. I get that it's a hot button thing to bring up a new person every couple weeks or every couple months and just lambast them and then kind of drop it. That's just kind of how our society does things. You know what I mean? Like they'll put someone to task for like two months and then they have a, a, like they basically have ADD in terms of like paying attention to a problem. It gets boring quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So they just move on immediately. Um, I get that, but I still think that it's a pattern with Hollywood. I don't think it's surprising at all. Like on February 10th, um, actress Charisma Carpenter from Buffy and Angel actually came out and said a lot of stuff that he was saying in terms of her and her character. Some of this is really bad. And look, I actually get the inclination to uncomfortably laugh at this. I'm not saying like it's funny, but like the lunacy of this feels like something that would be on the television in Grand Theft Auto Online. <laughs> yeah. Like the lunacy of the statement. Or a here. really bad soap opera or something. Yes. You know? Yeah. Because she actually said. His ongoing passive-aggressive threats to fire me, which wreaks havoc on a young actor's self-esteem. He callously called me fat to colleagues when I was four months pregnant, weighing 126 pounds, which, hey, that's not a fat pregnancy. Holy cow. You're, yeah, that's nothing. You're yeah. pretty small. Uh, he was mean and biting, disparaging others openly, and often played favorites, pitting people against one another to compete and vie for his attention and pr- approval. Um, she said that the behavior grew worse when she described Whedon's reaction upon learning that she was pregnant after, like, I guess she refused, after refusing multiple attempts to contact him. 
So what I didn't understand is she tried to contact him and he didn't answer. It's a little foggy there, but and yeah. And then, uh, you know, but basically this is the part that to me seemed like, oh, is this like a Grand Theft Auto show? Like who talks like this? Yeah. He asked me if I was going to keep it and manipulatively weaponized my womanhood and faith against me. He proceeded to attack my character, mock my religious beliefs, accuse me of sabotaging the show, and then unceremoniously fired me from the following season once I gave birth. Unfortunately, all this was happening during one of the most wonderful times in new motherhood. All that promise and joy was sucked out, and Joss was the vampire. So, here's the thing. Again, this is all alleged, right? I will be the first person to tell you, you know, I've said it before, I've said it about Ray Fisher, I've said it about everything, just because a bunch of people say something doesn't mean it happened. You know, I, I have the infamous story from my college. Uh, my really good friend who was accused of rape by his girlfriend because she cheated on him. He broke up with her. She started stalking him. He got the police involved and then she accused him of rape. So, like, I'm saying, do you get what I'm saying? Jeepers, I'm, I'm yeah. not saying that's, like, a common thing. But I'm saying you can find examples of people making stuff up with anything. Right. However... With the amount of people talking about this and people who are reputable actors and who don't have anything career-wise to gain from saying it and also who haven't cashed in in any way. Just saying, like, because, you know, you can come out with an allegation and then sort of ride it. Well, and there... No one has. And not to jump too far ahead, but, like, going off of that a little bit, um, later on we'll talk about how, like... They talked about how uh, not to piss off Joss. And, like, we shouldn't make Joss mad. We want to make sure that he's okay and, like, we don't want to do that. And on the record, one of Jeff John's reps came out and said, yeah, well, we didn't say that, but we said something kind of similar to that, basically. So, essentially, that's it's giving credence to the idea of, well, this, this is how this guy is. And, like, we don't want to make him mad because then who knows what's going to happen, I guess. That's not, a, that's not a very good work environment. And so, I guess the connection there is just, like, there's been acknowledgement that this guy is unpleasant even from respect. warner bros studio even like officially is their what you're representatives saying. Yes. yes yeah and um i don't think that like studio representatives should necessarily have more clout and value than random people but they do in terms mm-hmm. of like news you know like if a studio that is going to be self-serving they all are you know i'm not attacking warner bros here like they're all self-serving they're a business and they have to protect themselves right if even they're going to come out and say, hey, listen, yeah, this guy's a douche, kind of, um, that lends a lot of credibility to For this. For sure. Yeah, any one of these statements on its own could probably be ignored, but all of them together kind of paint a bad picture. It does. It, it just kind of adds up quickly, and there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, so this was, so here's the funny thing about this. Um, he was awarded... Uh, by Equality Now for his work in female equality. However, later fellow Buffy actor Amber Benson came in support of Carpenter's statement, tweeting, Buffy was a toxic work environment, and it starts at the top. Uh, She's speaking the truth, and I support her 100%. There was a lot of damage done during that time, and many of us are still processing it 20-plus years later. So, well, one, that's kind of sad, you know, that this affected people badly. Legitimately traumatizing in some respect, yeah. Yeah, and, you know... It's just sucky because Hollywood has sort of enabled all of this to happen, you know? Like, yeah. it, it just keeps allowing people to behave that way. There also was a, a lot of statements from Sophia Crawford and Jeff Pruitt from Buffy, you know, and they were talking about basically, I don't want to go word for word on this, but that they did great at the start. They ended up in a relationship, uh, but the show became more and more of a success and the latter began to exert more creative control. That being, you know, Whedon. Uh, By the time season four rolled around, Pruitt had become fed up and told the series producers he was planning to leave to go to work on other projects, adding, the producers told me that Joss reacted as if I was having an affair or something behind his back. So, one, that's ridiculous. So this is very childish. Yeah. I also do think it says something that Joss refused to comment on these articles talking about him at all. I mean, I'm not saying it means he's guilty, but it's like, why don't you say something in your defense? Like man? this didn't happen. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah if, if this wasn't something that was, you know, it's a very incriminating uh, group of quotes here and a lot of stuff that's coming out against you. Uh, I would think if you're innocent, typically it's, you know, like this isn't true, but maybe he was instructed not to say anything. I don't know. Yeah. Of course, we can't assume, but I just, I don't know. Like, it doesn't look great, I well, guess. Well, and the American know? Fifth Amendment is about this. You have the right to... Not say anything. For sure, for sure. Because sometimes you can talk and self-incriminate even if you didn't do it. 
You know, so that's that was the point of the Fifth Amendment in some ways, like the pleading the fifth. And that's what the, a lot of people do, even like guys will like they won't say anything, they'll just kinda of go away for a while and hope things kinda of die down. And maybe that's yeah. what he was doing. He was just going away and just yeah. like what it's not true, doesn't matter. I'll just kind of move on. And like you said, maybe two months from now, everyone will forget about it and I can start doing stuff again. But it's so much to be not true. I yeah. I always think of the classic um, episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. It's called The Drumhead. And the idea about it is this woman uh, comes in and she accuses this man of being a spy on the Enterprise. Sorry, I'm not going to go too far off track here. I know sure, I have sure, a sure. track record of doing so. Um, and it just keeps spiraling more and more. And this judge, you know... She just keeps taking it further and further, and then she eventually accuses Patrick Stewart, the captain of it, and he points out, like, well, you can't take someone's silence as saying they're guilty. So the reason that I'm saying that is I do agree with that. All I'm saying is that I don't understand why you wouldn't want to say anything in your defense at all. Like, it just doesn't seem self-serving well, to you. Yeah, and it, and it makes sense, like, if there was, like you said, if there was one of these quotes and you're just like, that's not even worth responding, but, like, yeah. with everything that's here, and you can look it up and there's a... a ton of stuff on on how this guy is unprofessional and all of the allegations against him uh you would think with that much there's something maybe worth saying or making a statement but maybe he doesn't think he needs to i don't know so more things uh, that are worth addressing pruitt was asked to return for buffy season five and he was going to i was called into the office oh wait so this is from um this is actually from crawford who said, I was called into the office and I was given an ultimatum. Come back to the show, but you need to leave Jeff, so Pruitt, um, or don't come back. And she started crying and said, F you, that's horrible, bye. Um, later on, you know, <laughs> there was more things mentioned by Pruitt. Joss told both Sophia and I that no one will ever hire you again after this. He never says to anyone that he'll see to it you never work in this town again. He is very careful he only insinuates that no one will ever hire you again if you don't please him. So it's like an indirect way to say, like, I'll make sure you don't have a job. Right. Yeah. And it's, yeah, he's not saying it directly. He's not, you know, putting it necessarily uh, in quotes, but he's, you know, you can kind of gather when someone's saying something like that. It's so. like, instead of I'll kill you, it'd be a shame if something happened to you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, Which I don't know how that doesn't count as a threat, but... Uh, James Marsters, who I actually really like, he um he not only played, by the way, Spike on Buffy and Angel. A lot of people don't remember this. He played Brainiac on Smallville. Oh, really? James Marsters. Oh, yeah. no way. Okay. Did a fantastic job. He's such a good character awesome. in that show. Um, but he played Spike on Buffy and Angel. He actually talked about playing as the you know the villain who Joss Whedon had intended to be a short term character. But Joss got really angry because the character became very popular. He wanted to get rid of him. Apparently other people in the studio didn't. And he, Marsters recalls, I remember he backed me up against a wall one day and he was just like, I don't care how popular you are, you are kid. You're dead. You hear me? Dead. Dead. And the crazy thing about this That's is... That's insane. If dude. he's talking about the character, fine. You know, like, I get it. But, like, you're still directing that as a, at a human being. Like, Marsters could have said... That's a threat. Dude, he sounds like a like a really bad villain on an old western, is what he sounds like there. You know what I mean? Like, that's not... That's... I don't care how popular you are, kid. You're dead. You hear me? Dead. Dead. Yeah, hey, you got a wife? Yeah, I'm Joss Whedon. Hey, you want this role? Your wife better sleep with me. He's such a dick, man. Like, I'm telling you. Like, okay, look, it's all alleged, but I, I really have never liked Joss Whedon, man. I'm telling you, that Roger head. No, dude, and, and what are we mad about? Because like, a villain got good? Like, he was very popular, and so, like, How you better dare stop that you? right now. <laughs> yeah, dude, what are you mad about? That's a good thing. You're a good character? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I need to bring in another woman to work on set. Yeah. You're taking up a slot. Dude, he's like, he's like, this guy comes off to me as like radiating Larry Nasser energy. You remember Larry Nasser? Yeah, the gym Nasser yeah, coach guy? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not saying, you know, like. The sexual predator? Well, guy? maybe. But kind of, because like there are also a lot of allegations that he did use women and sex to get what he wanted. You know, like, for example, having an affair with like all these people on set. And there have been a lot of claims that, you know, like, there was this same kind of thing, like the, um, not that you won't work again, but like the. You know, I can make your career get better type thing if you, you know, you know, you're kind of with me. That kind of thing has been like murmured behind the scenes for sure. a long time. Really? Now, okay. Now, could that I be, didn't know that. Yeah. Could that be completely false? 
Absolutely. But that kind of thing was backed up by his ex-wife, you know, who talked about him having all these affairs and stuff like that. Um, It's just not good. And the thing is, women do make their own choices in Hollywood, just like anyone else. However, when it is a position like this, I do think it's fair to say that they're put in a bad spot. If you if you refuse a director's advances, who is like really, really big up in there, you know, not just like rotund, like Joss Whedon is, but I'm talking like, you know, you're a big director. Look at Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. You know, like you might hurt your career. That's kind of the problem. So a lot of them just go along with it. It's like, well, it's easier to sleep with this guy and know I'll have jobs. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know that. I didn't know that it was up to that. I just thought that it was just kind of a, Dick, it's possible but... he wasn't, though. Okay, I'm just saying yeah. that was something murmured like behind a rumor the scenes and forever. Yeah. Just like Harvey Weinstein's was, and then it came out it was true. This right. one hasn't been directly confirmed by many, you know, not any sources and... that we have here. Right. I'm just saying yeah. it's something on the table that's not good sounding. Sure. Okay. And it adds again to the amount of bad faith things this guy has done. And you would think with all the allegations coming out that, like, and maybe not, but like a, the Me Too movement would have hit Joss Whedon then at that point. Yeah, but and I don't want to sound like what's one more. You know, right, what's, right. what's one more allegation? Let's pile it on there. He's a rapist, too. Right, That's right. not what I'm doing. Right, no, I know. I'm I know. just saying that with how bad his character has con- been confirmed to be by so many people, to me, it's like. Yeah, I'm not surprised if that's happening. Like, that's not a shock at all. Sure. If that's yeah. happening. Um, his ex wife, which, by the way, ex ex marriages, you know, your exes, they're not a good source for bad news on people because they're always mad. You know, like I, I go back to your parents, like not to be rude. It's something we've talked about before, like, you know, just briefly on the channel, but like, you know, if you, if you found the right button, you could poke your mom or dad to get them to say some negative stuff about the other one very easily. For sure. You might yeah. not even have to provoke that. <laughs> no, it yeah, might just yeah. come flying, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, and that's the thing is like, these are people who are very close to you and they take it all very personally, you yes. know? But again, it's just another one on the pile. Like, it's just even more. His ex-wife, Kai Cole, did say to the rap, he used me as a shield both during and after our marriage so no one would question his relationships with other women or scrutinize his writing as anything other than feminist. He had multiple affairs and a number of inappropriate emotional ones that he had with his actresses, co-workers, fans, and friends while he stayed married to me. Despite understanding on some level that what he was doing was wrong, he never conceded the hypocrisy of being out in the world preaching feminist ideals while at the same time taking away my right to make my choices for my life and my body based on the truth. He deceived me for 15 years so he could have everything he wanted. Again, I'm telling you, like, you know, this is, these relationships are very rocky, very hard to use as actual evidence of bad behavior. I think it's easier with good behavior because your ex-husband or wife has no reason to say good things about you. You know, when you have, like, Johnny Depp's exes coming out and saying, this guy's no abuser. I think that's easier for me to take credibly than an ex coming out and saying bad stuff. But it's just another thing. It still matters. I'm just saying, on its own, I would be a little skeptical about this. No offense to Kai Cole. I don't, you know, know this person at all. But just because of the relationship dynamic. But because of everything, again... It's just a lot. Yeah, and she's got hindsight now looking back on a 15-year relationship that she now sees as incredibly toxic. And all of this could absolutely be true. And, you know, based on the stuff that we've been reading about this guy, uh, it's, you know, it seems to me more likely than not that this could have been taking place. But obviously it's more of an allegation from a biased source, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean. Not looking for the best interest of Joss Whedon. Not that we're defending him here, obviously. No. And, well, that's that's the rough thing. It'd be very easy to just throw Joss completely under the bus. But I feel a little bit like a hypocrite if I say I know everything's true because I've also equally said a lot of times, like, hey, listen, if there's no proof of stuff, it's a little hard to take it as true. It's just that there's so much. You know, this is like... Not on the same level of sexual abuse, but again, Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, Larry Nasser, this type of thing where so many unrelated people who have nothing to gain from saying something about it and don't ride a wave of popularity after it at all come out and talk about it. That, that's a lot. You know, like you can tell in certain situations, um, and this used to happen all the time before the Me Too movement, way before, uh, where an ex wife would come out and do an expose on their ex, you know, and be like, oh, this person's trash to make money. They mm-hmm. do that to make money all the time. You can see it in like, you know, all kinds of the magazines, especially when you were checking out at the grocery store 10 years ago. It would always be like, whoever dishes on ex husband, blah, 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 total slut. You know, like that <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, it was to ride a wave of popularity. For sure. 
and get paid because they, they pay for that stuff. You know, yeah. But I haven't seen anyone do that. No. You know, I haven't seen anyone ride a wave of popularity off this. Maybe Ray Fisher a little, but he has no job now. No, you know, yeah. like I and and that's kind of why we're getting to Ray Fisher here. Um, this one's complicated. I want to hear more of your thoughts on Ray Fisher or when we talk about this because I've given mine so much. Yeah, and it usually pisses people off because I don't just wholeheartedly believe him, but like I don't know why I should. Yeah, you know that that's my only thing is um, with everything that he said. With Ray, with Ray Fisher and Joss Whedon, Ray was informed that they were going to be changing the character of Cyborg in Justice League. When he was told that, he actually flew from New Jersey to meet the filmmaker in L.A. They met in a bar, and Whedon was tiptoeing around the fact that everything was changing. As he left the meeting, Fisher was handed the script. By the way, this is all from articles, which I will link in the description. Mm -hmm. These sources, I don't want to, you know, not credit anyone. Sure. Um, he was handed the script which he read twice on the plane back, gone with Cyborg's traumatic backstory, his relationship with his mother, whose loving scenes with her son were eliminated, as was the accident that killed her and led to his transformation. The material was later restored in the Snyder Cut version of the film that was streamed on HBO Max. It represents that his parents are two genius-level black people, Fisher says. We don't see that every day. Now, for me, I'm just going to fall on the sword here for a second because it's my channel. For me, Ray Fisher is someone who has talked about how he thought it was a big responsibility to play a black superhero you know like this that that was part of the character to him rightfully so and um you know he wanted to do it well and he didn't want someone to basically just turn his character into an on-screen abortion of the story i get that yeah um yeah. but he has sort of made everything his statements about race and the thing is like most of the other people joss whedon was an absolute ass to allegedly are all white I'm not saying he's not at all racist. I'm not saying he is. But, like, I don't see that connection. I just see the connection that Joss Whedon's a douchebag. You just know, an overall me. douche to everyone. Yes. Yeah. Like, just an asshole. I, I don't know what to make of it, but I, that's the problem I've always had with Fisher's accusations is that it, it keeps expanding. Like, first it was just that Whedon was being racist. Then it was kind of like Whedon is a racist. Then it kind of seemed to be like, well... Jeff Johns and Walter Hamada enabled him. And then it kind of seemed to be, well, Jeff Johns and Walter Hamada are encouraging an atmosphere of racism by enabling him. And to me, it's kind of like, really, Jeff Johns, the guy who's created diverse characters and pushed them in comic books for years when other people didn't want to? He's the racist? Well, why, why is he doing that? You know what I mean? Why is, why is he helping other races so much present narratives in a predominantly white-dominated industry in terms of characters comic books why is he presenting those characters then it's not because they make tons more money they don't you know like why is he doing that if he's such a racist you know it's there's just a lot of stuff around this that to me it feels like fisher is also very jaded from his negative experience and has made it out to be an even worse thing than it was but that's just me from the outside and i kind of want to know what you think yeah and given from this article maybe we're not getting all of these specific details and obviously maybe there's nuances and specific uh conversations and experiences that he had with joss whedon specifically that made him feel that way based off the information that we have here of him basically not getting listened to and kind of getting uh condescended to about his about his character and well, can you mention that by the way too the the call oh you're getting yeah into that and then I, I want you to finish what you're saying but i want you to mention that too. well yeah yeah so basically uh in a call with whedon later fisher said that he had barely started to talk about the character and what he wanted to do when and when he uh when whedon cut him off and said it feels like i'm taking notes right now and i don't like taking notes from anybody not even robert downey jr he said uh, other sources on the project say Whedon was similarly dismissive to of Godot and Momoa when they questioned new lines. And this is all about the, the reshoots that they did. Uh, so I think it's that last sentence is important as well, was that he didn't treat uh, Gal Gadot or Jason Momoa any differently either. They were like, these lines are garbage. And he's like, nah, I don't take notes, not even from RDJ himself. Like, who are you? You're Shut not... up and say the lines. Exactly. That's actually a quote too, you know. He said that from... Um... Like a witness had basically said that when he talked about Gal, Joss was bragging that he's had it out with Gal. He told her he's the writer and she's going to shut up and say the lines and he can make her look incredibly stupid in this movie. By the way, Gal Gadot is a woman and she's not really white. She's from Israel. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's worth noting, but she's not black. No. You know? And I'm not saying that as a negative. I'm just saying, like, this guy's a douche to everybody. Just because someone he was an absolute douche to 
wasn't white doesn't really mean he's a racist and it doesn't mean everyone around him is it just means he's a prick in my opinion no yeah and i i totally yeah and i I see what you mean too and i I think that maybe there is a chance that he maybe he is racist we don't know for sure but like based on this information here that that we've been provided with it just seems like he's more of just an overall douche to everyone and that he's very dismissive of anyone uh trying to change his ideas and threatening what he thinks is going to be good um and even it doesn't even seem to matter if something's good for him it's just that he's in charge because look at what he said to gal gadot it's this i can make you look incredibly stupid in this movie if i want to this movie doesn't mean anything to me it's almost like he doesn't care if he sabotages the movie because he's in charge because as long as he's in power well it's the same thing with spike from buffy it was like people wanted him and he's like no i'm the director yeah i'm gonna make sure you're gone it's 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 like like, well but if if all the credit isn't going to joss whedon for his creative vision and it's like well no this is actually really good we should keep going in this direction or oh you have revisions or you think that this is bad tell me why let's talk about it that doesn't happen with joss whedon and it seems like that's what he does with everyone so it's hard to directly point that to at ray fisher and say well this was motivated because ray fisher is a black person and that's not i think what i'm gathering well, from this but there obviously could be more to this that we don't know there but, could and all i was saying too was fisher looked at this from the point of view of someone who's black because he is yes you know that's his cultural background and right. heritage and stuff and you know, he even said it was like he was assuming how black people would respond rather than taking the advice from the only black person, as far as I know, with any kind of creative impact on the project. But here's the problem with that that I have, um, which I'm sure someone would say stay in your lane or some ridiculous bullshit like that. But, um, you know, I also don't think you can assume that Ray Fisher speaks for all black people. I've seen a lot of black people say, I don't like Ray Fisher at all. And even some claim that he's lying. You know, like, I'm not saying, like, they're a hive mind, they speak for themselves, you know, you people, that kind of thing. Like, I'm, <laughs> right, not, I'm right. not saying something racist here. I'm just saying, like, you know, it would be like if Robert Downey Jr. said a statement about white people. I like RDJ. He doesn't speak for me. He's himself. He speaks for RDJ. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of what I was saying was, like, you know, I mean, even Ray Fisher, in a way, is kind of just assuming that because of his background, that his opinion matters more, in a way. I mean, to, in, at least that's how I take it. You know, like, well, I would know how the the how my people will react. It's like the, they're all individual people. Everyone's an individual person. I don't know if you can assume that just because, you know, I can't assume how white people react to something. Yeah. I just, I can't. That's impossible to do. Everyone's an individual. You and I react to things very differently. We're from a pretty similar background economically and everything, actually. The only difference being you gravitated more towards sports i gravitated more towards nerdy stuff and you know earlier on and then you kind of veered over a little bit other than that similar background we're both white we're both about the same age we react to some things very differently Mm -hmm. that's all i'm saying about that can you help me did i say anything bad here i don't want to come off as the guy saying like you don't speak for your people or something (laughs) like that i'm not i'm not calling everyone like a group i'm saying the opposite everyone's an individual and I think that's what's yeah. I I totally get what you're saying. Is that it's it's save more me of, please. It's, <laughs> it's that I'm all right Ray, now. <laughs> it's that Ray Fisher is speaking for Ray Fisher and his specific experience and from everything that he's gathered in his past and and coming to that experience with Joss Whedon and felt that way and and that and looking from our outside looking in on just the information we have here, it doesn't really seem necessarily that this was racially motivated. It's just ego motivated. That's just how Joss Whedon acts. And so I, I definitely get what you mean that, that it's not like a, he's speaking for the entire group here. I, well, I, I just don't want to be someone who's like, um, I'm, I'm thinking carefully here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be like the family guy, uh, clip where I come back and it's like, Oh, I'm king of these people now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying it like this is one collective people group. Right. I'm saying the opposite. You know, like, a person who is, you know, whatever you want to say, I I believe the term now is black, but um, if you think African American is better or, you know, person of color or any of these, whatever you think is politically correct, um, who is from an affluent family, maybe does very well, has much more income than me, is going to have a very different experience than somebody who grows up in downtown Detroit, is barely making it, you know, maybe single parent household is going to have a very different uh, experience than someone in the suburb. They all three can experience a form of racial profiling from someone like a police officer or anyone. They absolutely can. But they're all going to have their own unique experience as an individual, just like Ray Fisher is. That's all I was saying was when he says, like, you know, you have to take my word for it because that's me. It's like, well, 
No. Like, you know, I don't speak for all Karens. They're white. They're going to, like, get way more mad about something than I am. I just don't care. <laughs> They're not like me. Right, right. Um, that's all I meant. And uh, not to harp on that point, but I just think that this all comes back to Joss, in my opinion, being a huge douche. And he has made one thing I really love, you know, and I think it's okay to admit that. I love Age of Ultron. I really love that movie. It's a fun movie. Um, do I think it could have been even better? Yeah. But I honestly like it better than the first Avengers movie by a lot. Um and Joss really helped bring that together. I, I don't think this has to mean everything he ever touched is garbage. And, you know, like, um, anyone involved in any project ever is an enabler. And Walter Amata enabled him and all this stuff. I just don't think all this has to mean that. But I do think that Hollywood has been allowing a lot of this behavior. And I do think that in some ways, even according to Jeff Johns, you know, representatives, they did a little bit, you know, enable him to just kind of do what he wanted on set. And I don't think that's a good thing to just kind of be like, don't piss him off. Well, I did want to touch on that, that last part too. We, I think we've got one like final. Oh yeah. Sorry if I skipped that. No, no, no. It was just that I think it's important to note because they were like the comments about Jeff Johns and uh, others, executives at Warner Bros, you know, also being a problem. It was, and maybe they were enabling or they were kind of letting things happen as well. That's absolutely, you know, it seems like it's true. But Gal Gadot came back after having it out with Joss Whedon and, you know, her and Patty Jenkins had a lot of issues with what Joss Whedon was trying to do. And so she went to Warner Bros. and she said that, you know, I had my issues with Whedon and Warner Bros. handled it in a timely manner. So she went in and they resolved the issues and they're like, you know, yeah, I see the problems here. Uh, So Jeff Johns and everyone that's at Warner Brothers obviously was like, yeah, we, you know, this is not right. There's something wrong here. And so let's, let's fix this. Let's figure it out. So there was a little bit of at least some communication in that respect. And I don't think I wrote down the don't make him mad thing. I might have missed that. Oh, unless yeah. you already mentioned that earlier. But can you explain that just very briefly? You know, like, because you understood that even better than I did. Well, yeah, it was basically like, uh, so I think it was Ray Fisher was complaining and, and talking about how this wasn't good. And other cast members that come up and said as well, like, this isn't, like, he's not listening. Nothing is really great. And uh, essentially, Jeff Johns is what he was quoted as saying, uh, and not necessarily what a witness had said, uh, was that we can't make Joss mad. Like, he's in his creative process. Then a representative came out later on behalf of Johns and said, no, he was more so saying, like, uh, Joss is in his creative process and we don't want to interrupt that, which was a roundabout way of saying we don't want to make Joss mad. And so uh, that's one kind of weird thing. So that then later, when he had it out with Gal Gadot, um, she said that Warner Brothers handled it in a timely manner. So it seems like maybe there was a switch there potentially. And well, were like, well, worth noting, he was dropped from Batgirl or or left. Sorry, yeah. I'm burping, but... No, that's all right. You know, he either was dropped from Batgirl or left of his own accord. We don't know which, but they said he exited the project. Mm-hmm. Now, it just happened that he exited the project shortly after being called out for a lot of stuff. Right. Just saying. Yeah, something interesting, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What do you what do you think? I mean, we've we've crossed thirty minutes on this, which was not intentional at all. <laughs> yeah, so sorry yeah. about that. Uh, we're gonna have to do the Snyder cut of this video. <laughs> yeah. Um, just closing thoughts, what do you think about this whole thing? Like, do you think there's anything we have to clarify that we said? Do you think there's anything about, you know, this that still needs to be said? I mean no, I don't think so. I think that we, you know, we just the the whole point of the video, I think, was to just kind of outline all of the allegations and how maybe one of these by themselves is like, well, that doesn't look great, but like, you know, is there is there anything else here? But when you show all of these allegations together and how they all kind of intertwine well together and have some consistencies in how he how he acts and how he treats people, um, and it, it just seems to give more and more validity to uh, the idea of this guy is just not really a good person. So yeah. uh, I think all of the evidence together and kind of the point of this was just to show that. Yeah. I mean, and it's not like to slander joss whedon no it's just to outline everything that's been publicly said about him and published publicly about him right and he almost not not even to give like more validity i guess to ray fisher but to also maybe show like there's a lot of people that were having a hard time with joss whedon and so yeah ray fisher i mean that's you could say what you want about certain things about and how he interpreted it and how he interpreted it but there's absolutely uh, i think some credibility to be seen there more because of the allegations it just kind of adds on top of it i guess and it's just frustrating and i i do think too you know not to be the constant centrist but i do think that people need to have a little bit more of a center view of some of this stuff in terms of just because someone says something doesn't mean you automatically latch onto it as truth right But there does become a point where you can't really ignore it either. Um, It's just so much. And yes, someone might have misinterpreted an event or two, but it's extremely unlikely that everyone misinterprets events around the same person. 
you know, at, at a certain time or at a certain point, they're the common denominator, mm-hmm. you know, and whether he's racist or not, or whether he's sexist or not, or whatever, at the end of the day, it's like, I just think he's a jerk. You know, that's really my opinion on, on the guy from all this stuff. Um, and I think it's too bad. I hope that Hollywood stops enabling this type of behavior. You don't have to be a saint to work in Hollywood. You know, you don't have to be an activist. Like the Quentin Tarantinos, you know, of the world who can just make really cool stuff and they don't have a big message and they're just trying to make something fun. Way more power to you. You know, you're not hurting anybody. You're having a good time. Awesome. I don't even care if people in your movie are saying problematic stuff. I don't care about any of that. You know, it's a movie. It's fictional. It's fake. It's a fantasy. But the people out here who are like, you know, being so hypocritical about what they preach with like, like the stuff he said at the beginning and then allegedly having all these affairs and being so rude to Gal Gadot. I don't think a feminist would treat a woman that way, Mm -hmm. you know, like to Lord power over a woman. That's the opposite thing of feminism. A hundred percent. And especially, it's not like she, she was saying like, Hey, is there any way we could change this? This isn't good. Yeah, She didn't come up and say, Hey, you dumb bald fuck (laughs) change this, which it was objectively bad. I mean, there was, there's screenwriters now that have come out and cinematographers were like, can you mention that the vandalism? Yeah, there was a, I think it was a screenwriter who said that the justice league reshoots that Joss Whedon did was, and I quote an act of vandalism. Like he said it was bad and he tried to get his name removed from the credits so that he wasn't attached to the project anymore. And that, uh, you know, everyone was saying that it wasn't a pleasant experience that was on set doing the reshoots. It wasn't good. Uh, like it's just, it's not a good look at all. And when people are saying, Hey, like this isn't great, but because it's Joss Whedon and he thinks he's got this complex of where everything that he touches is gold apparently i mean that's that's not good it's not a good look i wonder if his ego will be knocked down a little bit that everyone hated his version of justice League and liked snyder the snyder cut yeah Yeah. that's gotta suck that's not great yeah let us know what you think in the comments down below um if you enjoy this type of video i mean not that it's like you know like a fun romp through memory lane or anything (laughs) here because it's pretty bad stuff but if you enjoy this type of thing let us know we're not a um we're not like a you know, entertainment weekly type film, uh, rumor mill type thing. Uh, but we talk about stuff we find interesting. And this I think was very interesting to both of us. Um, let us know what you think in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on Joss? What are your thoughts on the Ray Fisher situation? What are your thoughts on all the Buffy stuff? Um, everything just kind of wondering from the outside, you know, did I miss anything? Do you have more, uh, you know, are there any other allegations that are interesting that probably should have been brought up? Let us know. This was already 40 minutes. So we'll see you in the next one. Have a fantastic day. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this. Like for more content. Appreciate you very much. And check out all the links down below for all the sources. Uh, the official Etsy shop with all of our stuff down there. Patreon, uh, Discord, Instagram. It's all there. Peace out and stay shy.